Welcome to today's edition of Crypto Corner at InvestorIdeas.com, news on what's driving the cryptocurrency market. This podcast was sponsored by cryptocurrency payment technology Flip, a creation of FitPay Inc., a leading provider of cutting-edge payment technology and a subsidiary of NextID, traded on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol NXTD. Next ID is a provider of healthcare devices as well as payment credential management and authentication platform services. Learn more about how to order Flip at fliptopay.com. And Crypto Corner is also sponsored by Genesis Blockchain Technologies or GBT. GBT is a powerful cryptocurrency centralized decentralized exchange which will include a broad range of services and benefits from cryptocurrency and blockchain markets development while avoiding complications and risks arising from cryptocurrency ownership, transfer, and exchange. You can download the Genesis Exchange and Wallet app at Google Play and on the Apple App Store. Learn more at www.mygenesis.io. For this edition of Crypto Corner, we spoke to Raghav, or Reggie Jareth, the founder and CEO of Gather, about the state of the crypto market and the interest of institutional players in the space. Gather provides a web-based cryptocurrency miner that utilizes users' CPU and GPU power with their explicit consent, bringing an alternative method to monetize websites and apps. Learn more about Gather at their website, gather.io. Just a reminder, Gather is spelled G-A-T-H-3-R. Uh, Reggie, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Sam. Uh, great to be here. So tell us a bit about your background and give listeners an idea about what Gather is all about. Sure. So I have a, uh, you know, I've worn different hats in the last couple of years. I've worked in the oil and gas industry uh, in Iraq for a couple of years. I then moved into marketing, working with the publicist group for a while. Uh, and then I I got the startup bug. This is my second startup. The first startup was into logistics and uh, point-to-point delivery. And uh, then after, you know, I moved on from that, I kind of came across the idea of starting something in the space. And Gather was born. Now, how that actually happened was within 2017, I was looking heavily more into into cryptocurrency. And, you know, it, it had gone a lot of... Uh, traction or fame, especially, you know, around June, July, you know, you have October, November having the big peaks coming up. And uh, I heard of CoinHive and what they were doing, but I knew coming from a marketing background, that wouldn't work with a lot of publishers. So I I got together our team, we tweaked the model, you know, we knew what publishers would want, we spoke to a lot of them, and Gather was born. Um, Now, what is Gather? Gather is simply a web miner. Right? It's an alternative or additional form of monetization for your website or application. Simply put, you install the code in your website or application. When users visit your website, they opt in. It's an explicit opt-in and consent-based model. Once they do that, they are mining cryptocurrencies in the background, the, pay, the proceeds of which are paid out to you in Bitcoin, fiat, or in our native Gather token. So a year ago, we look at the crypto space. It looks quite different. Uh, now, there are certainly a lot of naysayers even back then. But to an outsider, it might appear that the naysayers might have a point right now. So if you could just talk about what has changed in the in the crypto landscape in the past year, and uh, what's your take on the downtrend we seem to be seeing here? For sure. I mean, you know, the naysayers are going to come and go. And this isn't going to be, this isn't the first, and it's not going to be the last downtrend, or it's not going to be the last bump in the road. Uh, you know, last year we, we saw price movements going from, I believe it was, you know, single digits all the way up to double digits. Uh, you, you're having ma- major movements, uh, talking about 2017 here, and at the end of 2017 you had this massive bump hitting almost $20,000, you know, and, and if you compare that what it was in maybe February of that year, you know, it's mind-boggling to think of the increase if you compare to traditional uh, investments such as stocks or shares, etc. You, you don't see those kind of gains. Now, the naysayers, you know, they, they uh, came out with many people saying it's a Ponzi scheme. Uh, what is the actual use case? Is it a form of payment? Is it a store of value? And they kept harping on about this going on and on and on. And it comes back again, you know, and uh, especially right now, you know, they're coming out in force. But this is just a small hiccup. 
it was needed this this type of correction. And even if you look in the history of Bitcoin and specifically Bitcoin's price over the last from you know a couple of years, five, six, seven years, um, they've had major corrections. It has you know between eighty and ninety percent. So it's nothing crazy. It's nothing unusually out of order. It's something that has been experienced. And with, with the current downtrend, um, you know, calling it a bear market, I, I guess, is, is uh, appropriate at this point. But there's a lot of positive things happening in the space. Technology is evolving. We're seeing further adoption. And most importantly, we're seeing a friendlier regulatory stance coming about from multiple nations. Of course, there are some nations which are taking a uh, hardline stance, such as Iran or India, or, or, of course, China as well. So, but there are a lot of nations that are looking at it as, okay, hey, this is interesting. We should be exploring this. You know, everything that's going on in the States with the SEC or uh, CFTC, it, it's still positive. You know, at least there's something going on in terms of regulation, in terms of some clarity for people who are working with blockchain or cryptocurrency. So as you mentioned, behind all the headlines we were seeing predicting the demise of Bitcoin, there's a lot of activity behind the scenes, right? Um, a lot of it for involves, sure. in, yeah, a lot of it involves institutional investment and interest in the space. Like, what do you make, for instance, of the likes of Nasdaq moving ahead with Bitcoin futures next year and just getting involved in the crypto space more and more? Um, I think it's a positive sign for sure. If you're seeing institutional investors or at least the custody or the gatekeepers for them uh, getting showing interest and major interest, it's, it's a very positive sign. Right now, from the beginning, it was all what traditional investment and maybe some angel or some form of VCs, especially the last couple of years. But when you're seeing institutional in terms of people, players such as NASDAQ, and you know we've had all the ETFs that have been not approved or postponed coming in. It's showing that there's a high amount of interest from very sophisticated players looking to enter the market because they see the potential purely. So that does two things. One, of course, there's going to be you know major effect, uh, major effect on the actual price uh, of major crypto assets, and then it's going to fuel adoption, right? And it's not because, okay, hey, these people are coming and holding or buying or trading. It's that their name alone, just saying NASDAQ, right, is uh, supporting Bitcoin or accepts Bitcoin or it, uh, accepts Bitcoin in the term of, okay, you know, they're, they're uh, investing into or with their futures or et cetera. Um, it puts a lot of faith in people. Right now, one of the major issues with cryptocurrency is about the negative image that is associated being a newer technology, et cetera. You know, right now is a really interesting period um, viewing what's going on, especially uh, in, you know, last two weeks you, you see price movement. W one thing that's really interesting to see um, in terms of ASICs and Bitcoin is the hash rate and how it correlates to price movement. Um, usually price and difficulty are related. You know, if you have a massive difficulty drop, you're going to see price go down and vice versa. So that's what we've seen. You know, the price went down and difficulty dropped because miners aren't profitable anymore. So this is going to be very interesting to see going into next year as we see the price move up. It would be, I would say there's going to be um, an influx of mining coming in very soon to take advantage of this current difficulty uh, drop. That does it for today's Crypto Corner. If you would like to be a guest or sponsor for this podcast, contact InvestorIdeas.com. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website. And this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products, services, or securities. Investors are reminded all investment involves risk and possible loss in investment. To hear more InvestorIdeas.com podcasts, please visit InvestorIdeas.com slash audio. And a reminder, you can also hear our podcasts on Spotify, iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spreaker.com, iHeartRadio.com, and Google Play Music. For disclosure purposes, Next ID is a PR news and social media featured company on InvestorIdeas.com.